Hey guys, Asian Diva here, and welcome back to another video. You guys are sleeping on Craig of the Creek, and no, I do not mean that literally. For those who don't know, Craig of the Creek is a series on Cartoon Network following the adventures of Craig and his friends through life and the creek. While at first glance it seems as a bland idea, the execution of the show is actually perfect and has some interesting lore that more than five people should know about. Today, I'll be reviewing one of their newer episodes, Winter Break. While I haven't talked about the show yet, there are only a little bit of things you need to understand when going to this episode, and it mostly has to do with the other side of the creek, which just as it sounds is the opposite side of the creek where not many of the people on Craig's side has, has been to. The other side is a hierarchy ruled by a king who is a kid, mind you, and the ki all the kids have rankings, while Craig's side is supposed to represent the free side where kids can do whatever they want, and that stays true throughout the seasons. Another detail you guys need to understand is that at the break between the two sides is a bridge called the underpass where another kid that goes by the name of the green poncho guards the other side from getting onto Craig's side. He has become cool as he appears in more episodes and is pretty good friends with Craig. As of right now, we're on a standstill on when the king is going to take over the creek, but Craig is determined to stop him. That's just about all you guys need to really understand. There are a plethora of other characters who are actually really interesting, but I'll have to talk about them some other time. Alright, let's begin the actual review. The episode starts off with Craig visiting a deserted creek. Due to the weather, most people are home away from the snow. This is one thing about Craig at the Creek I really do enjoy, and that's just the creek changing seasons. It's nice to see the alteration of colors and see annual things such as Halloween, Christmas at the creek. Craig's puzzled why Kelsey and JP aren't at the creek, so he looks around to see if other kids are there. To our surprise, the only people Craig sees are Kit and, and Bobby. Good old Bobby, we love him. Kit tells Craig there's a beast at the creek, and that's why people really haven't been coming. Jeez, man, this this reminds me of Over the Garden Wall, hmm? G gives, gives me some vibes, huh? But anyways, he heads up north to find the beast. Now, he's not just called Craig at the Creek for no reason. Craig keeps a map of the creek as he tries to track everything and not to forget about anything. Seeing him run around as he can't translate his surroundings with all the snow is really amusing to me. And these occasional fourth wall breaks, it's just the icing on the cake, especially for these newer episodes. Luckily, Craig finds JP pretending to be an old man in the woods with a kid. It's one of those um, kids from that one episode. I, I forget the episode. Anyways, JP's sort of like the, the Patrick in this show, like in Spongebob. He's always adding to the comedy. And here is no exception, as his acting is hilarious, explaining to Craig his faltry. It's only been a week. I came to play with you and Kelsey. <gasps> Kelsey. Look, I don't know when's the last time you saw her, but there's a beast out there. She could be in trouble. We should look for her together. Together. Are you just repeating the words I'm saying? Repeating. He hints Craig was gone for a little bit, more than what they thought he would have. But JP's kind-hearted. So even though he was upset that Craig wasn't responding, he doesn't really get mad that often. The only times we've seen JP get mad was for personal stuff with like, his family and such. So obviously, he's going to forgive Craig pretty quickly. They soon find Kelsey, but she's a wild animal attacking them. As there, Craig gets a real explanation on how things have been. I really like the Sonic reference here, but basically, Craig stays two weeks playing his video game over Christmas break instead of going to the creek with his friends. And then the two explain they could not decide what to do, so they broke their friendship and that was a drama, man. I'm not the biggest fan of the scene, honestly. On one hand, I can sorta understand why Kelsey and JP were upset that Craig wouldn't say anything. But just based off of how close they are, does that really matter? Like, let the kid breathe, you know? It's not like he was playing with other kids. He was just addicted to a video game for a few days. Not to mention, it's not like the weather is any better. It feels more or less like Kelsey, not JP, mind you, is making Craig look bad for no reason and demands a lot from Craig, which is completely unnecessary. And going back to what I was saying, he's known for going on solo missions with other kids even. Heck, he did a few episodes ago. So why are you mad here that he wasn't with you guys when he wasn't a few episodes ago? I wanted to build a snowman, but she wanted to fight with swords. There was nothing we can do. So we agreed it would be better if we just stopped being friends. Uh, why didn't you just fight a snowman with swords? Uh, uh, see, Craig, this is why you needed to be here. And it's also interesting to see JP and Kelsey admit that Craig is the only reason their friendship is still alive. And even though Craig can be assertive at times, he, he acts as a good leader. And during this part, I love the voice acting. Like, JP's voice actor is one of my favorites of the show. It's always funny whenever he speaks. While they're arguing, a bunch of snowballs are flung into the air, and the green poncho shows up to help. 
The other side started a snowball war as their first means of attack on the whole creek. And here enters the king. The king is rich and he's super cocky. And of course when you have those two qualities, y you know what's gonna happen. The green poncho, also known as Omar, so if I say Omar, it's the green poncho. And the king have a, a, a slight history together. And, but they're, they're still enemies now. And I think seeing the kids at the slaves here should just give a bit of understanding on why Omar just dipped. The one small detail which I am only mentioning because I didn't when I first watched this episode is that the king has a servant who is like a bodyguard to, her, to him and she isn't with them which is going to come into play in a little bit so keep that in mind. Explaining that they shouldn't have a worry, Omar asks them why they're fighting. They start making snowballs to defend themselves but they don't realize that the king brought some of the strongest kids from the sides. Not just in terms of strength as there are some fictional elements in there. Like, one of them acts like Sonic, one is super strong, one can throw a bunch of things. It is a little fictitious, but just keep that in mind. Omar tries to handle as much as he can, which is a decent amount, but they are still arguing, and it's three against one, man. Like, obviously, Craig and Kelsey are gonna make up, but it's just annoying when there's a serious problem in front of them, but they're not, they're, they refuse to solve their problem to save the creek. And the green poncho is knocked out cold. Realizing each other falters, they need to work together to act and fight back the king. Not much to stay here, but I am still on Craig's side. Sorry, Kelsey. Craig thinks quickly of a plan to stop them, and sure enough, he does. They make a bunch of snowmen, launch a net of snow at them, and the other side of retreat. But now, why did I bring up the king's servant? Well, right before the episode ends, the king's servant, also known as Maya, who was Omar's friend, just, just as a little clarity, his servant is seen hiding at Kit's, um, Stan. The king's servant is seen hiding at Kit's stand, claiming she knows that how to conquer the creek. I don't understand how Kit will help the other side, just based on how loyal she has been, and she doesn't look like the person who can be pushed around a lot. So I'm wondering what Maya is gonna do to, to like, get the creek. I understand that she is, you know, economy in the creek. Like, she trades, she gets, she gives kids food. Like, I get she's like a main source in the creek, but I just don't understand what she can do. And that was winter break. Right before winter ends, they're, they're a nice batch of episodes. And no, I didn't think Kelsey arguing is still needed, but it was still a good episode. And it's a basis of what Craig of the Creek will be. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I do actually um, have another video plan about talking about um, Craig of the Creek, because I do truly believe this show is actually underrated and deserves more attention. But due to this channel, I want the content to be spontaneous, so that won't be out for a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. There are a few things, again, I didn't, I didn't mention. There's, there's character arcs, there's the Council of the Creek, like there's so much of this show, there's so much hidden lore to the show that if you don't watch it, you're not going to understand, and I really want to talk about them. But if you want me to see me talk more about specific stuff, let me know. But other than that, have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.